Uh, this is a 2.5 um, V6 Mitsubishi engine in the 96 to 2000 Chrysler Sebring convertibles and many Chrysler products but what I'm going to say here applies to any vehicle any vehicle at all and a lot of times you have these well it could be from a number of issues but sometimes people are changing parts and they're like saying what the hell is wrong right they can't figure it out I mentioned this in other videos but I want to really emphasize this more because this applies more to older cars first off every single connection and ground that you have take them off and clean them thoroughly and a simple thing is make sure you got a good battery because a battery that's weak will play havoc with any kind of, of computer management systems with an, en with an engine but clean all the grounds like in this one it's got ground wires underneath the main ground ground here there's a ground over by the uh, EGR you can't see it's a little dark there there's, there's all kinds of grounds the other thing is sometimes you think you have a computer problem but it's not throwing a code now you can have the dealer service manuals and you can you, you can take the probe and check for voltage at the pin and all this stuff you could say it's got this much voltage it's got this many ohms where it's the resistors are supposed to be say for instance if you're checking the uh, the uh, ignition coil in the distributor or whatever right many times now this car is about 15 years old but you gotta watch that even though these are good connections and they look like they may look like they're clean there could be something where they're not quite as clean as they should be and you're not getting the exact voltage through so this is the computer on the car it's very easy to take out it's got you know a couple clips on the top here and there's like a, a bolt straight down this way and a bolt this way and the whole computer basically slides out I think it's I've had it out a couple times and had a reprogram this is the TCM it's got a connector on there I think it's a 10 millimeter or an 8 millimeter bolt it's a one bolt just unplugs but there's a lot of pins and they normally don't get dirty, but you're talking cars, and this could be any car. It could be, 50, you know, 15-year-old cars now. You know, it was in 1996 that they came out with the ODBC2 computer management systems. And all the cars since the 90s got computers in them. So, for instance, this is the computer that's out of, this is an extra one, that's a good one, that is out of the vehicle, right? And, you know, it sits in there like this. So look at all the pins that are in there, right? Now, you can use something like this electromotive cleaner, but now this tool, I don't know if you can reach in there too good, but sometimes I use this real lightly. This is Dremel, and I don't like wear down the pins or nothing. I just kind of go over them the light so they get scratched up a little bit. But say for instance, uh, you know, we're gonna go in here and turn this on low speed. Um, let me start. I think I unplugged it. Anyway, we're unplugged in again here. So, like, if you turn this on, I got it on low speed. Like, this is kind of fast for uh, doing this stuff. You just want to lightly touch it. You know, go over everything, and you might have to want to take this off of here and just kind of go through it by hand a little bit. And then use, not WD-40, but electronic or electromotive cleaner. It's designed for cleaning electronics. You want to spray this down and, you know, like this way so the stuff's coming out. And you don't want to get it, you know, it's, it's not designed, it won't screw up electronic circuits, but you don't want to get any in there anyway. But, um, and I, I could see there's a couple pins on here that are a little dirty. Like this one works fine. But say, for instance, I had a problem with my computer and I wanted to put this one back in there. This is already programmed my VIN number and stuff. I would, um, I'd make sure all these pins were like really clean. And um, then you want to take the electromotive cleaner, this stuff, and you want when you take this off, you want to spray this, these, these connectors inside, let the stuff run out, and then re-plug them in, re-plug them into this. You know to connect the computer several times you know after you cleaned everything up thoroughly same thing like with the TCM any ground wires any anything out there make sure 
that everything is really clean. I found even with the oil pressure sender light, the problem is you can change them out. Some people say change them out and they work a while. The sender light and the low oil pressure light's going on. Well, the connector's dirty. It gets dirty. So you want to thoroughly, thoroughly clean it. Use a little bit of electromotive, um, a little bit of dielectric grease. I'll show you what that is. I'll go get that. Well, it's this stuff. It looks like a white grease. It's not an ordinary grease, though. It's made for keeping... Um, it pushes out of the way and it fills in the voids where an electrical contact is made so the water can't get in there. You don't need much of this. I had this for 8 million years basically. I had a couple big tubes of it and I still have most of it left. Because uh, you only need a little bit. You don't need to gob it on there too, too much. But you might want to use a little bit of that. I'd like that worked with the sending unit. Um, that's always a problem with these cars. The oil sending unit gives you a false reading that... The oil light is always on but you could be having crazy gremlins and you're like changing parts you're wondering what's going on with an old car I mean as part of the standard tune-up you probably should do this you probably should disconnect everything that's a wire harness go over it with some kind of like um, you know maybe if you can't reach in there like if you use this Dremel wire wheel this is kind of strong you know I just touched it real light but you might want to go over it by hand take that wheel off of there kind of scratch it up go over it by hand you don't want to wear down the pins or nothing you just want to like hit, hit them real lightly and then uh, use this stuff and like I said replug in everything a bunch of times all the ground wires you got a ground wire here you got a ground wire down there but the, uh, the um, what do you call it it's the EGR ground probably can't see it but it's right there where I'm pointing to I pointed to this on other videos but it's not it's not particular to this car this is actually every single vehicle now on the road practically has got engine computer management systems and they can you know it's it's almost never in the wiring where it's a problem it's always like a pin gets slightly dirty slightly corroded it's putting through the vaults and you can check the pin you say yeah it's got the right amount of volts but when it's connected it's not quite making a perfect connection and it's giving you little gremlins like this car it's got 250,000 miles on it runs great and I can tell you right now most of the mechanics aren't going to do this because it's labor-intensive and it's like um takes time i mean yeah labor intensive takes time same difference same difference they'll do it a little bit maybe but if you want to make sure your older car is running good you want to do this deal and it's like i said it can work but it sometimes it's something's doing something a little strange this very much can be the problem very much can be the problem so you want to do this actually as part of a tune-up actually you know pull off the various connectors at least go over them with the electromotive cleaner and re-plug them in a few times even if you don't sand them down a little bit and like I said if you use a little bit of um, wire wire brush on them like a small wire brush or something it gets in there don't do it too much where you want to wear down the pin you want to just you know get the junk off of it that's all you want to do and it may look clean it may look clean it may look like it's perfectly clean but that does not mean it's got some kind of junk on there that it's not getting a full contact like it should and that will play havoc weird little gremlins with your uh, electronic ignition system or a sensor that's not you know in the main it won't it may not show up it may not show up on the diagnostic codes it may not show up so just want to behoove you on this deal because uh, it's uh, you know sometimes people are having problems and they're like they're trying to trace them they're trying to trace them they're changing some parts left and right it could be something simple that doesn't cost any money but it will take you some time to go over it